Good afternoon, Razorback fans. And uh, this is your uh, Razorback devotional as uh, we're going to try to make sense out of everything that's been going on. And now that we've had uh, a full 24 hours to let this marinate and to let our emotions kind of take a back seat uh, a little bit and, you know, all the things to go along with it. I felt like I really didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do a devotional because I, I felt like that maybe because I'm tired of doing bad ones each and every week, but it's it's the same thing. I got to do it this week, too. And and talking about the uh, major issues going on. So um, but I, I thought about doing it. Honestly, I thought about doing it yesterday for the Razorback um, for the Razorback devotional. And I'm. I started seeing just the uh, vitriol and anger and horrible things getting directed towards me and others uh, during after the game and just a, a lot of frustrations, which I get it. I get it. But I think that it just needed some people needed some time to breathe, sometimes just step back and say, hey, let's let's think about this. Let's let's just let's just talk it out. Let's go through it all. Let's try to make sense of it all, and, and let's get to uh, the main glaring issues right now with this Razorback football team. Uh, they are three and three now. They are six games through the season. They are three and three, and I uh, I honestly thought that when I was doing my season predictions, I thought that they would reach this point at four and two. If you go back, I felt like four and two was a hundred percent in play. Because obviously I had high expectations of saying ten and two, which I'm sure is I'm, obviously that's impossible now. But um, I I felt like though this stretch, if they could find a way to get to four and two, the rest of the schedule would be extremely favorable. And luckily for Arkansas, <laughs> as crazy as it may be, the final six games still is the more favorable part of your schedule. Now, you still have a big road game against BYU this weekend, which we'll talk about on the podcast this week. Uh, you have a bye week, which could not come any sooner than what it needs to be here at. Then you have at Auburn, which Auburn's not a good football team, a, a winnable game if you're healthy. And then you have, uh, after that, you have Liberty, should win that one. Ole Miss and LSU, or LSU and Ole Miss, I forgot, I think it's LSU first, then Ole Miss. But uh, those uh, those games could, you know, go either way. I could see Arkansas winning them. I, you know, it just depends a lot. And then Missouri on the road is a winnable game, too. So my point is that it's not completely and totally out of the question or out of the realm of possibility that this team can turn it around and have a strong finish to the season. They did it last year when they lost three straight games. Uh, they hit the bye. They, they lost three straight. They ended up beating UAPB before the bye week. And they hit the bye week, and they finished strong. So... That could happen again this year. I don't know where the confidence level is on that happening this year, but it could absolutely happen this year. But I'll, going back to the game, though, because now that we're starting to get more people in and getting back to the Mississippi State game itself, the A&M game hurt the most because you felt like you were the better team, but because you gave it away to them, you lost the game. Alabama hurt in a way of just because it showed you just how far you still are from being one of the top tier teams in the SEC and competing with the Alabamas of the world. This game, however, there's so many things that we got to dive into that I took issue with. And this is probably the first time that I've taken major issues with the coach, with some of the coaching decisions by this staff, where I'm not going to be the type like some of you are or some that people on social media have been of saying fire everybody, fire Bryles, fire Odom, fire Pittman. No, no, I'm not getting to that point <laughs> because I don't I'm not a fan unless things are just so bad that it, it's causing a problem inside the locker room. You don't need to fire coordinators in the middle of the year because it, it just it's just going to put you in a bad position. So. I'm not to that point, but there are a lot of things, though, that I took issue with that I know a lot of you took issue with in the same uh, same things. And uh, I think I think we need to talk about them in this game. Uh, something I tweeted about. We'll start with the number one things. The thing I tweeted about the most was that the defensive strategy in this game 
was I, I had no idea what this was. I'm not a defensive coordinator. I'm not a coach. But I can tell when something's working and when something's not. And Arkansas ran the same type of strategy defensively with this three-man front that they had, you know, in previous games against Mississippi State. And so I felt like, okay, these things, it, it makes sense to run it because you've had success against them. But in the early part, very early part, the three-man front, rushing three, however you want to put it, was proving itself to not work at all, like zero. It was a failure. But instead of trying something different, instead of trying to mix it up, they just kept doing it. They just kept going out there and kept running the same defense over and over and over again. Now, it's bad with the injuries, which we'll talk about in a second. The injury situation is bad. There's no, ba no question about it. That's not an excuse. It's a reality. The secondary is so depleted with guys that are banged up and hurt, it's not even funny. Like, they had to move Hudson Clark to safety, and yeah, he missed a lot of tackles. People were on him, but I'm like, he's not a safety. <laughs> That's why he missed tackles. He's not a safety. He's a cornerback. So that was bad within itself. But my whole thing in this whole situation where I get it that you want to try to run this defense that you've had success against Mississippi State in previous years, but you ain't this previous, you ain't the previous year's defense. Your strong point the past two years, you could make an argument, was your secondary. Because last year you had Fouché and Brooks and Buster Brown. Um, you know, you had really good solid SEC players the year before that. You had all those guys plus Catalan. You know, that that to me made sense in those years. But this year, you don't have them. This year, your strength as a defense, if you have one, has been getting to the quarterback. Your defensive line and your blitz packages, especially with Drew Sanders coming off the edge, that has been your strength of your defense. But for whatever reason, you went into this game and you said, okay, we're just going to rush three and we're going to drop eight. And we're not going to get a single finger on Will Rogers. We're just going to let him sit back and wait until somebody gets open. And then he's going to throw the ball and it's going to work out. That to me was the dumbest thing I, I, I've ever seen. Because I feel like if you know, because it's not like this is a secret that your secondary isn't good. If you know your secondary isn't good. And you're going up against a team that's extremely gifted at passing the ball, but you are good at getting to the quarterback. Why wouldn't you just say, all right, we, we won't be able to cover either way. So let's just get after him. Let's, let's have a four man front, send the dudes, get Drew Sanders there on the outside to try to make Will Rogers uncomfortable, throw, throw in bumper pool in there as well. Try to just do something to get them after, get those guys after it and stop them. Slow them down. At least try to make it difficult to where he's got to throw the ball, where he either takes a sack, throws a dared pass, has to rush, like something else. And again, I don't mind if you start with that three man front, but when you see it's not working, change it. Change it completely. I would have rather you start trying to blitz the quarterback and trying to get after him and still get beat, and then keep doing the same thing like they did over and over and over again and get beat anyways. To me, that's bad. If you have a strength, which Arkansas does, is, is they may not have many, but if they have a strength defensively of getting after the quarterback, you got to get after the quarterback. Do that. And if he passes on you, it passes on you, but he's going to pass on you anyways. Obviously, you dropped eight and he still passed all over the place on you. That was frustrating to me. To me, that was the thing that even without the injuries, like make that adjustment, change that because they just got worked on that on that side of the side of things. Uh, the other deal that I took issue with was uh, the st they started the wrong quarterback. Cade Fortin seems like a nice kid, seems like a guy that may. Uh, you know, have a good arm on him. But when he got, when he even got the name as a start, I'm like, I don't know if I like this. 
Because I know he can't run. He's not to the way of KJ and Malik can. So they're not going to respect his running ability. Anytime that they run the RPO, they're just going to key on the running back because they have no ifs, ands, buts, or bad that Cade Ford's not going to be able to run. And that's what happened. That's what they did. And honestly, there really wasn't any reason to believe that. I was like, this guy can pass a whole lot better either. So they start Cade Fortin. It doesn't go well. They throw in Malik Hornsby and immediately a boom, bust out for a long run. And it's like, wow, 50 plus yard runs. That's what we've been hoping for. That's what we've been trying to see. And it seemed like it was the right thing. Then he gets banged up and hurt. And then you got to bring in Cade Fortin again, which I don't, you know, it, that's just the way it is. Like, that's not anybody's fault. That's just him getting, that's getting, getting banged up. You don't get any points out of it. So that was a really annoying, which we'll talk about that again in a second. But you started the wrong quarterback. And then, like, you had Hornsby in there for again, and then you brought back in Fort. And I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Stop with this. Oh, well, in passing situations, put in Fort. No, stop it. Leave one quarterback in there and let him roll. That's it. That's all you got to do. Don't rotate quarterbacks. Don't say, okay, well, passing situation, Cade, come on in. That's dumb. Now, luckily, they did fix that and adjust to that and left Malik in, which, you know, and I like Malik. I think Malik definitely provided a major spark for Arkansas. I mean, in this game, he passed for 234 yards, 8 of 17. He did throw two picks, which you can't have. But he rushed in this game for 114 yards on eight carries. Like, dude was dude was better than what any other option you had. But it wasn't enough. So, this is... This was just really annoying. That was really, really annoying to me of how they started the wrong quarterback and the, the problems mounted from that. The next deal is uh, something I discussed about a little bit earlier, the injuries. Now, I'm not making excuses. And I know that people are always going to say, which this is why I kind of get annoyed when I'm doing this stuff, like, or when I'm tweeting out or anything. You can't, you say, you put out like one tweet of one thing and then everyone's like, that's not the reason why. Stop defending them. I was like, all these things can be true at once, folks. It's not just one thing. Things can, different things can be true at once. The Razorbacks can play very poorly. They can be out prepared and out coached too. But injuries can also be a big part of it. It's not an excuse. It's a reality. And this team is dealing with some severe injury issues, defensively especially. And I know that. It's frustrating to watch this team because of that fact. But I almost feel bad for these secondary players. Like, you know, Simeon Blair is a guy that struggled. But, dude, like, <laughs> what do you expect out of him? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's not he was never supposed to be in that situation. You know, Breeny and, and, and Hudson Clark. Hudson Clark's moving positions. Like, I feel bad for him because he, he didn't ask for that. He's not supposed to be in that position. You know, McLaughlin's all right, but it's still like he's even had some struggles here and there. But you're talking about you lose Catalan for the year. Slusher, it, it seems like he hasn't been right in a while. So your two best secondary players have been gone or are gone for an extended period of time. Um, you lost Ladarius Bishop for the season as well, even though, uh, he, you know, he had moments, but it's like he still was a guy who had experience. Like you've lost so many different players and it just sucks. You got to do next man up mentality, and I get that, but it's unfortunate that it's happened to Arkansas. As, and, it, and it's just, but and so I almost feel bad for them because it's like they're trying their best to throw out who they got. I mean, they moved Sam Mbake over to cornerback. He was a wide receiver because they are so desperate in that position. And so I feel bad for him in that regard. I really do. I feel bad for him. I know nobody else does, and no, probably nobody else cares, but. Injuries are a factor into all of this. And so they got to get healthy. They got to get to this bye week quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I mean, just, and that's just the, the, the defensive players. I mean, you, you don't have QB1. You don't have KJ Jefferson out there. So, you know, that's too much to ask for Malik or anybody else. So injuries, so injuries played a huge part into that as well. Uh, also defensively, the dropped interceptions. That to me was brutal. That to me was one of the things that you, if you make two of those, I think that accounted four, four, balls that should have been picked and Arkansas didn't get any of them. And so, or four of them at least should say 
could have been picked. I think two should have for sure, and then two should have like could have been like it, it wasn't a hundred percent. So you gotta you gotta make plays on that. That's something that Arkansas's defense has actually done well under Sam Pittman and Barry Ode in the past two years. Last year in twenty twenty, is they took advantage of turnovers. They had they they caused a lot of turnovers. And you know in this game, I don't think they had a single turnover. I know Will Rogers didn't throw an interception. I know that. And uh, I don't think I'm looking at the uh, looking at the uh, box score here. So I'm like, yeah, there was no no turnovers or anything. Yeah, so no turnovers at all. So you you can't. So your defense has already given up a ton of yards, given up a ton of plays, given up a ton of points, and then when you have opportunities to get turnovers, you don't do that. Like that was frustrating too, because a team that has kind of put their strength and rest of their laurels on something as good as that, uh, they they dropped a lot of them. So that was another thing I was frustrated by. Um, this is a this is one thing, and again, it's, it goes back to the injury stuff. Don't yell at me because it's like this isn't about this. Stop complaining. The officiating was really bad yesterday. It's not why Arkansas lost the game. It's not why Arkansas lost the game. But it was really bad, especially in the beginning part of the game. I don't know if anybody else saw it, but like the center for Mississippi State was always moving forward before he snapped it. Like every time he was moving forward before he snapped it. And I and I and it, we, Arkansas kept jumping off sides because of that, but they weren't calling anything. It's like, dude, what the heck? Like it was so obvious a lot of times. And I just could not believe. I'm like, what are they not seeing here? And then I guess either Sam Pittman complained or something like that, because then towards in the second half, at least, it slowed down a bit. But, you know, not calling those plays and, and Arkansas jumping off sides was, was brutal. I still think Jaden Hazelwood got interfered with uh, on that play where he uh, was almost there uh, to catch the football for a touchdown or should have been there. I don't th I think that should have been called for a PI. Didn't get called. Uh, but again, the refs weren't the reason why they lost, but the refs were really bad in this game. They did not call a very good game uh, whatsoever. Also, the broadcast was tr atrocious. Like, did anybody else feel like they were watching the game when it was being filmed with a potato? Like, what was going on? The, the, they never had the first down line set. They didn't have the down and distance set a lot of times. The shadows were disgusting. I the, Like, it looked like I was watching it in 480p. It was like a tube television. Like, what, what in the world was that? I think it's got to be a Starkville thing because I know Starkville they have nothing nice over there, but it's at least like is, is did you have the 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 interns there at the University of Mississippi State running the or Mississippi State University I recall you like did you have them running the cameras and and did somebody get you know one of their surveillance cameras from their their house to go out there and film it like for crying out loud y'all and like the they didn't show replays a lot of the times the camera work was terrible. Like that was just that had nothing to do with the game. That was just something I was really ticked off about. That was so dumb. It's like for crying out loud, it's the SEC network. Can you at least at least put something in there to where you can watch a game in, in an SEC stadium? Just so dumb. Uh, and finally, uh, also something that always stood out to me because again, I know we've gone through some game stuff and some non-game stuff, but uh, the cowbells, man. Like I, I still don't understand how they're allowed to do this, and it's not. Me complaining because again, it had no in no reason why Arkansas lost the game is because of cowbells. Like zero reason that had nothing to do with Arkansas losing the game at all. It's just really annoying how Mississippi State's allowed to use artificial noisemakers. And they're like, well, they stop it whenever the whenever the quarterback's uh behind uh center or whatever. I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> they keep going. Like when they're riding up for a field goal, like Arkansas's about to kick a field goal and the cowbells are still going. I don't understand how they're allowed to do this. Like Listen, I know that they have a small fan base with fans that don't go to games, and I understand that, and they don't have a home field advantage, but the only reason that they do is because of artificial noisemakers. So I just don't understand it, but I've given this uh, my ideas on this, folks. If you want the uh, cowbells to be taken away from Mississippi State, I have the easiest resolution, and, now, and the entire SEC can get on this. Just go out there and use cowbells. Have Arkansas and Tennessee and Alabama, LSU. Everybody just go out there and bring cowbells into the stadium. And you use them. Because I guarantee you that if everyone starts using them, the SEC is going to be like, okay, guys, let's put a stop to this. Let's get out of here. Cowbells are banned. 
I guarantee you if the entire SEC started bringing cowbells into the stadiums, started using them, the SEC would step in and they would take them out. So I don't know how we would formulate that or how we would get that done, but that's 100% of what would happen. So, But again, the, the past few things were just something that uh, stood out to me and that bothered me too. But what it really came down to is running the freaking three-man front the entire game, which was so dumb and so bad. Uh, starting the wrong quarterback, which was bad. Not uh, okay. Yeah, I meant to. Sorry, this was kind of a subheading in the quarterback situation. I meant to bring it up. Uh, the uh, the the calls that they had that Arkansas had in the red zone. Like Arkansas was one of three, I think, to start in the red zone with and not even getting points, needing score touchdown. That's pathetic. Like that cannot happen under any circumstance. If you get within, if you're first and goal from within the five yard line, you're scoring a touchdown. Every single, like, you have to score a touchdown. And Arkansas didn't on two of those occasions. Now, I, it could be the play calling. I think, because, like, the play call that Malik had it where, I forgot which uh, wide receiver was running out. Like, it was the third down play. And he pat like, he had him open. It was just a terrible pass. Like, it was, a, that was so that was a great play call. Because it was there. Malik just didn't throw a terrible pass. But the next play, when you're running these shenanigans and you got guys, you know, one and in coming out, and then this guy's coming over here, and then and he comes in here, and you're like, oh, well, hand off right up the middle. And he gets stopped. I'm like, was that necessary? Did that really throw anybody off? They kind of felt like they knew that it was going to happen. That's what that's the way I took it. It was like I knew that was going to happen. But for whatever reason, like ugh, Arkansas went 0 of 3 on fourth down conversions, and I'm pretty sure. Were all three of them within the red zone? No, just two of them were in the red zone. Okay. Because, yeah, Arkansas went one of three from the red zone, one touchdown, no field goals, all of that. Like that, that's annoying. That is, that's stupidly annoying. And the total offense, Arkansas had 483 yards in this game. 483 yards in this game, and they got 17 freaking points. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of the Arkansas Toledo game. That Arkansas, now the score wasn't the same, but Arkansas lost like I think it was like uh like 16 to 12 or something like that. And to in, in Little Rock. And I remember Arkansas only scored 12 points, but they had like 500 yards offense. That's what that's what this reminds me of. The offense was there, the yardage was there. You 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 just you couldn't you couldn't convert. You had 10 penalties, absurd. Again, some of those I think were crap. I don't know why Max Fletcher's even been punting. Reed Bauer needs to be the punter going forward. I don't know why that was a thing. You had special teams gaps. Like you start off the game by kicking out of bounds. Zero excuse for that. You start the second half after you got some momentum heading into halftime and you get the ball back. And what do you do? You screw that up because you you can't field it. And then you almost give us get a safety, but then you actually end up getting it at the one yard line. So which just trashes that opening drive to the second half. It, it, the worst thing about all of this, folks, is that there are. There's talent on this team. I still believe there is talent on this team. I know injuries are playing a factor into it. But. It's like you just can't put it all the pieces together. It's like you fix one thing and the other. It's like a it's like a leaky pipe. It's like you got this leak coming out and you kind of put it together to try to stop that leak. And then another leak comes out and then you got to stop that. And then another leak comes out and you stop that. And then the leak over here that started the first time starts popping out. Like you just can't put it all together. Like I feel like when 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 you got something going offensively, you got some flow, you do something dumb. You can't score when you're in the red zone. Dumb. You can't feel the kick. You kick it out of bounds. Dumb. You can't get to the quarterback because you're sending three people. Dumb. It's like you have talent. I feel like you do have good coaching at times. You, 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 got, you got what you need to at least be a competitive football team. But penalties and turnovers and just dumb plays – is what's keeping you from taking that next step. And that's what makes this so much more annoying is that you are so much better of a team than what you're showing, but you're killing yourselves by not giving yourselves a chance. That no, Nobody can figure out anything. 
I just wish that there was one game, just one game where they could put it together. Cause I felt like last year, yeah, you had your struggles. You went on that three game losing streak and everything, but I still felt like you put it together at the end of the season. And maybe that can happen here, but you know, it's like when you, when you, when you beat Mississippi state last year at home, like that was a nice win. You put it together. Defense and offense, put it together. When, you know, when you beat LSU on the road, it wasn't the prettiest game, but you, you did enough. You put it together. You made it work. Like, you just can't put it all together right now. And I don't know if you can't. I don't know what the answer is here. I, I honestly don't. I don't know. I wish I could sit here and tell you what, hey, this is how you fix it. But I, I just don't know. I don't know what it is. You go into BYU this week, it's going to be tough. I'm making the trip to Provo. At least it'll be nice, and the mountains will be beautiful, hopefully. <laughs> At least I'll have that. But, and there's not much else that I'm I'm feeling good about going into this, than going into this game. You get you get KJ back. KJ is going to be cleared on Monday, so that's good. But you're three and three. You got six games left on the schedule. You got a game, then a bye, and then you end with five games. Like People have been asking me, I see in the chat, about you know what are my thoughts on the rest of the season as far as records and everything go. I would say I look at it as you have at least three wins left on the schedule. At least. At least. I think you beat Liberty, Auburn, and Missouri. I think you win those three games. I'm not saying they'll be easy wins. I just think you'll win those games. And so that gets you to six wins. So it gets you to a bowl game. But then BYU, LSU, and Ole Miss, the other three games that are tough, Luckily, you get two of those three at home. I mean, it's. I, I think I think best case, I think rightfully so. You're probably feeling like seven and five right now. Seven and five. Uh, seven and five would be what I'd feel comfortable in saying at this point in time. If you get eight and four, I'll be I'll be happy. If you get nine and three, let's go. <laughs> like if you're able to win out, okay. But it's this is this is this is crunch time for you. You got to figure it out. BYU is coming off a loss against Notre Dame. They're not going to be feeling sorry for you or anything. Like they're going to be out there doing their things and and trying to get get that SEC win. But you got a lot of problems. Injuries are killing you. Mistakes are killing you. Dumb plays are killing you. I know nobody wants to hear this because it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't. And I and I get it. I I I I understand that it doesn't matter. But I was just thinking about it uh yesterday. If you just had everybody healthy, everybody was healthy on this team. That includes Catalan, everybody was healthy. And you were able to keep Fouché and Brooks, which again, I hate to admit it, but you missed those guys. If you were able to keep Brooks and Fouché on this team this year. And then you brought, uh, and then you kept Catalan, and you were injury, like no injuries or anything like that. Folks, I honestly believe right now you'd be sitting at five and one at the worst. But you're not. I get it. You're not. But it's just amazing how much that can impact the team. Like Arkansas is just not a good enough football program right now to have the depth that other teams do. Like it's, it's just, it's just not the case. But, it's it's a it's something that you hope that can get remedied, can get fixed, can get adjusted. But as of right now, I know it's Razorback devotional, but it's really hard for me to give uh, words of encouragement at this point in time. You know, so walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no point spreads. We'll see. I think our, I think BYU is favored by three in this game, which I ain't touching that one. Uh, let's see if I can get to some of these comments. Uh, I'll try to get to them as best as I can. So we have a lot of them coming in. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Try to go on. Let's see. Hog says, just now joined. How you feeling about the rest of the season? Injuries have been very unfortunate. Yeah, I, I'm, th I'm thinking sour. Uh, seven and five. Like if, if I'm being realistic, seven and five, I feel like is still doable. Very doable. If you can be BYU this weekend. And get to that, and just limp into that bye week. Whew, that'll be huge. That'll be absolutely huge. 
Let's see, uh, Ash says, uh, Hornsby showed me he can be the guy in the future. I actually believe his ceiling is higher than KJ's, but needs to develop. I, I like Malik, but the, the problem with Malik is you can tell he has no touch on his passes. That dude throws it at 100 miles an hour. Like maybe that's something that can be fixed. But yeah, he has no touch. He just flings it in there. But if he can work on that, I, I like the, his, his speed's there. Like everything else but his decision making when it comes to his throws, because I didn't think, I think he made some bad throws there too. Um, he's, he's improving, but he needs to develop that touch. He needs to develop that, but his speed is there. There's no question about this. Casey says we need the team to lift each other up when someone makes a play like last year. Yeah, they're trying, man. I feel bad for him too. Cause like, they're just getting hit right and left and it's hard to keep each other focused and motivated when it's like, they can't even get on the season and cannot, can't even get on the field. Hawks says, Whoa, only three wins left. No, no, I didn't say only three wins. I just said I feel like there's at least three wins there. At minimum, three wins. You get to six and six at minimal at this year. And that's what I feel like. Ash says, uh, I hate that we match. I, I like how we match it with Mizzou, honestly. Yeah, everyone does. Missouri's not good. Like they've been, everyone's like, Oh, but they've been keeping games close. You know, look what they've been doing. I was like, I don't care. I think they've been losing. You know what happens when you keep the games close? Nothing. You still lose. Uh, let's see. Tusky says, Omen, uh, Odom went from a three man rush against Mississippi State. The entire game was amazing. Not in a good way. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I really, really did not understand that. Tony Brown says, Thoughts on decommitment of highly talented running back Braylon Russell. Yeah. I saw that. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's a good thing or, and I'm not trying to, to, you know, act like it's not a big deal because anytime you lose a four star player in your state, it's a big deal. That being said, though, um, I just, I just don't look at it as being a major issue. Like he was a running back, and he's, I'm sure he's talented. But Arkansas like got enough running backs; like they're going to get their entire running back crew next year back. So it's not it's not a huge loss in that regard. It's not something you want. But if it had been like a four star, it's a safety or four star cornerback or four star linebacker, you know, something like that that you desperately need, I, I would be more uh, concerned about it. But since it's just a running back, again, you don't want to see it. But it's not it's not the the end of the world either. Cody says we need to hit the transfer portal hard for capable secondary players in D line. The D line's actually been not too bad, but they just they were handcuffed in this game because there's only three of them. Like there's just only three of them there too. So they need secondary players. Something awful. Get get all the transfers in secondary. Harrison family going forward. Can you honestly pick three believable wins? Yeah, I just did. I mean, I I still think that they can beat. Auburn, Liberty, and Missouri. Like, I think that they can. I think that they're better teams than those teams. I'm just being honest. I'm not saying that'll be easy. I'm not saying that they'll blow them out. Just saying that I believe Arkansas is still better than those teams. Just, I'm telling, I, I want, here's, and here's another thing I'm hoping, folks. I'm basing it on the last year, but I'm hoping that last year could prove something to where you hit that bye week and you became a rejuvenated team and you finished strong. That's what I'm hoping to see this year. And that's what I'm banking on. Like I said, if you can just win this BYU game somehow and limp into that bye week, get everybody healthy, I bet you anything on the road against Auburn, you'll see a completely new rejuvenated team, especially if they get that win against BYU, because then you'll be sitting at four and three with uh, five somewhat winnable or at least doable games left. I, I think that you can just get to that point. You'll be in a better situation. Kim says our O-line hasn't been as strong this season. I disagree. I disagreed wholeheartedly with that. I think the offensive line has been the best part of this team and has been consistent. I mean, see how much time Malik Hornsby had in the pocket? Dude had a ton of time yesterday. Like Arkansas is still leading the SEC in rushing. I, I, I don't I don't have any issues with the offensive line right now. I, I disagree with that. What's the difference in the running style between Dominion and James Joyner? Why is Dominion getting minutes as a true freshman, but Joyner in? Well, that's something that uh, Sam Pittman's been a real big fan of Dominion. Likes the way he runs, likes the way he hits the hole. So he's been getting the he's been getting the uh, the feedback on it, or at least getting the reward for it for playing. State went for it how many times on fourth and two or three? Talk about utter disrespect. I thought it was a lot more than that, to be honest. But I was looking at the stats; uh, they only went for it on fourth down four times, and they got three of them. I'm not mistaken. I'm looking at the stat sheet, right? Yeah. Three of four. I don't think it was disrespect. It was just like, why wouldn't you? If you don't get it, it's not like Arkansas's offense is going to get out down the field. Like that's going to happen. So let's see. Uh, ID edit says we went, need to win on both sides of the ball. Yes. Yes. That would be, that would be ideal. That would be ideal if they could do that. Yes. Uh, 
that Hornsby pass to Bryce Stevens was beautiful, and that was possibly that was possible because of the line. Exactly. Like I think the offensive line's been great, uh, absolutely great. So, um, but yeah, folks, listen. That I I try to do this for about thirty to forty minutes. I don't want to keep y'all too long, but either way, I had to get this out, and hopefully Arkansas can bounce back. I'm just hoping. I, I know. Again, I understand everyone's frustrations. I do. I, I seriously do. I understand everyone's mad. I, they want blood. I get it. And it's great because in a way it shows that you guys care. You really care again. And it's, and you want to have that passion. Every Razorback fan or every SEC fan base has that. Just got to keep things in perspective too. And if you can just find a way to beat BYU this weekend, I, I really think, I really think that that's going to get you so much positive momentum heading into the bye week. And if you get everybody healthy or get as many people healthy as possible, you're in a great position. You're in a great position. So I'm just telling you that it's just keep the faith. Don't, don't let go of the rope. Don't want firing everybody. Let's see how this plays out. At the end of the year, then we can start saying what needs to be changed. But let's see how this plays out. Let's see how this coaching staff adjusts. Let's see how these players bounce back. Your halfway point of the season, let's see what they do. Give them a chance. I'm going to give them a chance. And again, if they go one in five in these final games, okay, let's let's start let's start cracking skulls. But give them the shot. Let's see what they got. See what they're capable of. See what they can do. I think they're capable of it. Just got to start showing it, like quick, fast, and in hurry. Appreciate everybody watching in, listening in, however you did it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, my YouTube page. Almost a 4,000 subscribers. That is awesome. So we're getting right there. It, it, it's being so much fun. So I appreciate, you know, everybody being a part of it and having fun with it. And also, uh, you can subscribe wherever podcasts are found that way, too. We'll put out another podcast tomorrow. And again, I appreciate everybody watching in, listening in, everything. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. Keep the faith. Raise your back, fans. You'll get through it. We'll see how it all plays out. But uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. All right. Have a great rest of your